So, today's what if is going to be a little bit different, as you can tell. I've decided to change things up a little and make a crossover video. Now, it's obviously a rather touchy subject, and over the years, people argue who is the smarter or stronger character, and regardless of everybody's opinion, they're both absolute icons of gaming history, and both deserve nothing but respect from both the Halo and Doom community. So since Microsoft has bought Bethesda, I began daydreaming, like I do, about what it would be like if, perhaps in a DLC for the upcoming Halo Infinite, we could possibly see a small DLC with Doomguy, which may be a little ambitious. And if not, then at least some small easter egg. In fact, I'm like 90% sure that they will put some sort of easter egg in there. Anyway, like I said, I daydreamed what might happen if the two met, and this is what I came up with. So enjoy. Hey Chief, check this thing out. A scruffy looking man in a navy blue pilot suit shouts across a large room of Forerunner design. Unlike most Forerunner subterranean structures, this one seemed very different. Chief noted the lava falling from holes in the rocky cave walls that seemed to land on top of pools of molten rock. The way the Forerunners had designed this place seemed to leave most of the natural looking parts of the cavern untouched, as if almost protecting the black obsidian-like rock that coloured the walls and high ceiling of the cave. The only thing they had seemed to have changed was the floor. It was a much brighter metallic design, and multiple metal barriers seemed to stick out as well as smaller pieces that seemed to float on their own, with blue light projecting from underneath the alive block of metal. And a blue light embedded into the floor seemed to project a trail leading from a kind of podium where the pilot stood. Chief finished inspecting the place as he regrouped with the bearded man. You've seen Forerunner symbols before, right? Any idea what this one means? The chief, standing in front of the pilot, turns to the podium that seems to almost demand attention from the room, with an ominous red glow. On top of the podium, around chest height for the Master Chief, seems to be a reclaimer symbol. But instead of it glowing blue like any other forerunner terminal he'd seen before, this one was blood red, and had strange looking symbols that seemed to circle the Reclaimer insignia. It means Reclaimer, but it looks different. The Master Chief presses his armoured hand onto the massive red hard light symbol. Out of nowhere, a screeching sound can be heard from the open doorway they had yet to explore. Wait here. Chief begins to walk over to the doorway, but not before the pilot jumps on in front of him and grabs his huge forearm. Oh no, you're not leaving me here. We can do this together. For a moment, Chief is ready to disagree with his decision. But it did seem that the pilot was able to pull most of his own way around the banished. The pilot stood in the Chief's way almost like a child trying to stop its parent from leaving to work for the day. Chief gives in. Stay on my six. With that, the pilot expresses a slightly wicked grin and stacks behind the Chief. You got it, big guy. With that, Master Chief raises his assault rifle and places himself on the corner of the rather large doorway. He peeks his rifle around the corner and with his Spartan reflexes, quickly determines that the room ahead is empty. Except for a large portal, 
a lot like the ones he had seen before on Requiem. The pilot keeps his magnum trained around the chief, towards the portal. Wonder where that leads? The pilot asks, not expecting an answer. The portal seemed to be a blood red, just like the podium and the lights on the floor. He knew that the Banished would engineer their own designs onto old Covenant vehicles and weapons, but he didn't think they would be able to do this with the Forerunner technology. A hard light terminal stands next to the portal. It had a date sprawled across it. It showed numbers and then symbols he couldn't recognise. The pilot gets closer to the red wormhole. He inspects it by slowly dipping his hand in. Chief reacts. Wait. The pilot snaps his head back at the chief in an unexpected manner, as if being woken from a trance, and then quickly pulls his hand back out. His rough and dirty hand now completely soaked in blood. What? What the hell? Out of nowhere, an impish looking creature darts out from the blood infused portal. The creature looks to almost be running from something, and completely caught both Chief and the pilot off guard. Without hesitation, Master Chief raises his rifle and tracks the skittish being as it slips around on the floor in blood, and then tries to regain itself. The pilot also now has his magnum drawn and watching the creature. Before either of them can truly investigate this horror, a hulking looking marine in what looks to be older armour seems to land through the portal. From what the chief could see, the man looked to be far too big for the average marine. For a second, Chief fought to himself. Another Spartan. But, inspecting his armour once more, quickly tossed that theory to the side. This man was not your average soldier. As the devilish creature on the ground squirmed, trying to regain its footing, the unknown soldier jumped into the air and slamming down onto the imp, landing on one of the back legs of the foul being and crushing its limb to a mess. It screeched in agony, raising its head high into the air as if trying to call for help almost. But its noisy cries were quickly drowned out by the sound of some kind of engine. As Chief and the pilot watched, the large soldier seemed to pull an ancient looking machine to life. If he was right, the Master Chief determined that to be an old tool used hundreds of years ago for cutting down trees. Before the imp could finish exhaling the pained wails from its lungs, the blade of the ancient machine slammed down into the skull of the pathetic beast, quickly and easily destroying it. The Master Chief, stunned by the destruction, stands in place. The pilot beside him, however, stood wary, unaware of the man's allegiances. The large slayer of doom and destruction pulled the ancient weapon out from the now limp corpse and turns the weapon off, silencing the loud and ancient petrol-charged engine. He looks over at the Master Chief. The helmets both seem to align with one another. The Doomslayer seemed to be trying to stare into the Master Chief's visor, as if trying to intimidate his very being. The pilot may have been wary, but a Spartan too was calm and ready simply examining the rather large marine-like man. Who the hell is that? The pilot asked, horrified and utterly confused. Master Chief doesn't take his eyes off the Slayer. This marine of doom slowly turns his head towards the pilot, inspecting him. For a second, he was kind of surprised, but showed no sign of his face changing. He kept his cool, and his intimidating face gazed through his visor. A human through a hellish portal was definitely unexpected. He turned his head back to the armoured clad Spartan that stood before him, rifle at ease. The golden visor reflecting the meaty red glow of harsh light. The Spartan definitely looked human, but undeniably more impressive than the pilot. 
much bigger and much stronger. He was curious to why the armoured green soldier didn't have his weapon pointed at him. He felt almost insulted that this man didn't see him as a threat. However, little did the Doomslayer know, in this newly found universe, almost any human in green armour was considered an ally, especially in such dark and urgent times. The chief would be much more concerned about a brute with a gravity hammer than another human, even if this man definitely seemed more than human. Before the two could finish eyeing each other up, a hellish scream of unimaginable sounds seemed to blast through the Forerunner cavern and reverbing off of the hard rocky surfaces around them. The Master Chief turns his head to the exit and raises his rifle with ludicrously fast reflexes. The pilot simply mocked the chief's movements, his magnum pointed in the same direction. The Doomslayer, however, took a slower approach to react. This man wasn't afraid of anything. Watching the Master Chief react made him chuckle slightly at how on edge the man seemed to be. However, the Spartan was simply following standard protocol. He had been through many campaigns in his years of service. The Chief was always on guard. The Slayer turns around and loads two shells into an old double barrel shotgun he now had resting in his hands. The pilot breaks the now disturbed silence once more. Well, whoever this guy is, I don't think he's working for the Banished, but whatever he just annihilated is nothing like we've ever seen. Chief replies, Stay focused, shut down that portal. The pilot snaps back to attention from his distracted thoughts. R right. The Doomslayer begins making his way out of the exit. Bloody footsteps follow his intended path. As the pilot shuts down the Forerunner facility, the Master Chief follows the Slayer out, and the pilot quickly regroups on Chief Six. As the sunlight of Zeta Halo's star shines through the cavern entrance, Chief and the Doomslayer stand at the entrance, side by side. The Slayer, shotgun in hand, staring into the large blood red portal that now hangs in the air of the atmosphere. The Master Chief does the same, staring up at the red eye that looked down onto the surface, his assault rifle once again resting within his hands. Before anybody can comment about the newly formed gateway, a phantom with brutes in its carriage fly past the two warriors. It blasts past them at low altitude and high speeds. Neither of them flinch as the crumbling phantom crash lands mere feet away. And as the dropship comes to a halt, what looks like human skeletons with thin skin attached to their wispy body whiz past following the downed bird. Doomslayer looks to the chief back to his left to see the golden visored soldier nod his head as if in agreement, almost understanding what needs to be done. The Doomslayer looks back over to his right at the downed alien ship and begins walking to them. Master Chief checks his ammo counter on his rifle and flips the safety off, following the Slayer on his six. All right, I have to say a massive thank you to my friend who helped me write this. Uh, he helped me with most of the Doom info I needed since he's quite the Slayer fanatic. So I'd like to shout his channel out, which is Sergeant Gaming 115 It's only a small channel that covers speedruns as well as classic Doom playthroughs, so go check him out and tell him I said hi. Link's in the description. Also, massive thank you to my voice actor today, who recorded his lines for the Master Chief. He has an absolute talent, and his work is seriously underrated. I'll leave any of his links in the description below as well. And now for my Patreons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. You people help me out immensely, and you are very, very much appreciated. So massive thanks to Liam Robertson and Corporal Hot Pockets. If you want to be in my next video, or maybe just have a chat, then join my Discord. There's tons of people just like me and you 
that will welcome you with open arms. Anyway, that's it for today. Peace.